Welcome to the first spoiler talk of the year 2020 for the book, How Quickly She Disappears. How quickly I want to get into some of my, do you have like specific complaints? Um, I, so I addressed one and I guess I'll copy it here. You know, just like, I, I felt that it did need to be set in 1941, but nothing that happened in that book really prohibited it from right from being set today and and, and in some ways while I, I don't want to say it's a criticism i whenever whenever i open or read a synopsis for a book right and i'm like oh it's a crime story set and i know i've mentioned this before set in 1973 i was like well clearly one fucking cell phone would ruin the whole plot or we just would have set it today mm-hmm. like that there would be a reason to you, that you have to take your story back to a previous time to tell a story so I don't know. That's really it. I do see one of your concerns, and I have a really interesting idea about it. So I'll let you go, and I'll, I'll bring that up when we get to it. Uh, so I'm going to start out just talking about uh, – well, I have two kind of thoughts that that overlap a little bit. But like character development, I think, in general, was really good. Um, I think that the author at some points chose to sacrifice the believability of characters – uh, for the sake of whatever weird twist was coming up, or he would introduce things to muddy the waters a little bit. And and the best example I can give is there are several there's several points throughout the book where um, Margaret has some sort of weird thing happen that's creepy and could be supernatural. Whether it's like there's a you know a girl that looks just like Jacqueline but isn't that's in her room and you know at night or whatever mm-hmm. under the bed. Or um, uh, things like that. Um, what was the other one? There was something else. There were several things like that that I feel like were only introduced to make you unclear about what was actually going on. Yeah, he definitely tried for a supernatural feel in a book that has nothing really supernatural in it. Yep. Um, I like I I, I got like I saw it. I didn't feel like he, I don't know. I didn't feel like he did it in a way that really bothered me. And the reason I say that is we see all this stuff through Elizabeth's eyes Mm -hmm. who clearly has, you know, not that she should get over it, but who clearly hasn't gotten over her sister going missing 20 years ago. So I feel like some of that interpreted through her eyes is maybe more sinister sounding than what would have happened in the canon of the book. Or if we saw it from, like, the husband John's perspective or something like that. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, Well, and then the other thing is, like, Margaret being so smart and precocious never paid off. Like, she was just a smart kid. She could have been a dumb kid, and everything that happened would have been the same. So you, in your notes, because we now have a whole new note system, too, with (laughs) with the new rating system. (laughs) So you said, Margaret suddenly hating her mom and trying to leave. And when I read that part in the book, what I expected to happen, let me take this a different way. If I was watching a movie, at the end of the movie, I'd say, man, for time, they had to cut the fact that Margaret somehow had developed a relationship with Alfred. Uh Because that's what I was expecting to happen, that she was going to try to see Alfred or break Alfred out. Because other than that, it didn't make sense. But if you put it in the context that Alfred had been writing her letters somehow, too, that she was getting some other way. Right, and, and duping her into doing something or whatever. Then her running away from her mom would have made perfect sense. Yeah. So there, there's what could have been an interesting plot point. Like I said, if this was a movie, because I know, you're, you know you don't edit books for length where you go, I'm just going to take out a big chunk. Like this book could have been an extra 20 pages that it would have taken to, to do this. Yeah. In a movie, I totally would have thought, well, that's some shitty fucking editing after the fact. Like that's, the director's yeah. cut would have this whole other part that made, made that make sense. Sure, that I, I agree with that. I think that, uh, yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, can we talk about Alfred's story? Yeah, Alfred's the one character that I didn't like, and when I say I didn't like, he I, I, Elizabeth, I think, was a well-rounded character, and I think that her questioning motivations through the story were good, and Alfred just felt like a goddamn cardboard villain to me. So here's my problem. Here's my problem. So let's just let's kind of lay out. So at at some point, it's revealed that um, he's a twin of the guy who kidnapped Jacqueline, 
And I have no mm-hmm. problem with that. It's kind of cute or whatever. Um, and, and then he tells her that he has spent the last 20 years essentially following her every movement and waiting for her to like basically recognize it or see him, see him and fall in love with him or whatever, basically. Right. More or less. Yeah. Yeah. Now he explains that he killed Mac because Mac was going to get in the way of the two of them. Mm -hmm. And so he couldn't let that happen. He killed Mac. She's fucking married. Like how did he watch her get married and not think, well, this is going to get in the way of my plans. But when a guy sees some drawings he's got in his airplane, yeah. that's a fucking deal breaker. I I think, because he mentions the marriage thing, and he's like, oh, I'm patient, I love you enough, I can wait. So he kind of addresses that. I think that his fear in killing Mac was like, hey, this dude fucking knows you and has creepy fucking drawings of you, and you don't know him. Do, do you follow what I'm saying? Like, the deal breaker wasn't... That he would be outed to her. It would be that he's completely exposed as psycho stalker, which I don't think was his plan. I think this motherfucker thought he was going to show up there and they were going to fall in love and she was going to run off with him. Um, all right. That makes, that makes some sense, but like even, even clarified the way that you clarified it, it's a thin fucking plot. Like what guy, it, it doesn't seem very plausible. Um, Plus he's, he, so I'm going to try and remember the timeline correctly. He gets there, stays the night with her and her, and her daughter during that time plants the dress in the house. Mm -hmm. And then only after that feels like he's going to get exposed, kills Mac and goes to jail. So he planted the first piece or the second prize or whatever in the house before he knew he was going to go to jail. Hold on. Let me change my plot score. Are I just changed my real? plot score. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that's a fucking plot hole, man. So he was setting up. So either he was planning on, on doing this weird, like, three-part uh, uh, system, regardless of whether he went to jail or not, or he was planning on it in case he had to kill someone because they were going to drive him apart. It doesn't... His plot is the thinnest part of the book. Yeah... Yeah, and like I said, I, I feel like there could have been more done with that can that character. So they, you know, get its build as Silence of the Lambs meets something I'm not familiar with. Yeah, the dry. And, and, yeah, and I would have, I, when I saw where this, this was going, I was like, oh, this guy is going to be like this brilliant mastermind that you know you're gonna. I don't want to say, say sympathize with that you'll be impressed by, and he just yeah. he just isn't. He's just this flat character. Yeah, he was a, he was definitely an opportunity in the book. Um, and then there was a couple other like character things that bothered me, like the townspeople. Um, once there was a rumor going around that like she was nice to Alfred or something, then they all turned on her. And yeah. Margaret acts out one time, and the teacher is just like a fucking giant bitch about it, instead of being like. <laughs> You know, like a normal person. So I, I feel like when he decided, um, I'm going to do this for this consequence, like, I, I feel like it was just a, a little bit of an awkward execution of those things because it's obvious that Margaret acting out was, you know, was for a specific reason. And, you know, the townspeople turning on them was for a specific reason. And it, it just wasn't, I don't feel like it was executed um, as well as it could have been. Yeah, I um, as far as the the twin thing, Elizabeth questions it herself, like halfway into the book, and the second it, it was actually like a paragraph before that. I was thinking, I'll bet this motherfucker's twin brother is the one that kidnapped her. Yeah, and then Elizabeth like, like has the thought, but it doesn't get exposed until probably like the eighty percent mark. Yep. So I also felt that like the twist ending was not delivered in a way that wasn't um, foreseeable. Correct. And then that actually kind of inspires another thought I'd been having about the book is it feels like they emphasize the fact that these girls are twins. Um, and they even mention some of the common things that, you know, happen between twins. Like there's some sort of like, you know, subconscious 
like energy or mm-hmm. something like there's there's a deeper connection that's it that happens in an unexplainable way anyway we all know that twins um have a special bond a special connection um which i feel like was never used for the sisters but somehow at the very end was used for her and her daughter yeah that's, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good point i, so I that, didn't see that that was a little a little confusing like i feel like that would be an easy mechanism like even if it was just like to to like when when alfred revealed where uh her sister had been the whole time like somehow that relating to like she's had so many fucking dreams in this tie it to a dream like she saw something in her dream that matches the drawing that she saw on the wall or something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he yeah, could have done that's... in that way. Like you honored like the, the twin supernatural bond um, yeah. in a way that's like clever and cute for the, and he didn't do that. That's a good point. That was a missed opportunity for sure. Um, I did. I, I will say that, you know, when we talk about relationships and the mother daughter bond, I, I did like their relationship when, um, when Elizabeth comes clean and asks her for her help. Yeah. Like, I, I, I almost feel like this would have been a better book if that was the case all along. You know, not necessarily from the beginning, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> if Margaret was a partner. Because um, she, like, basically disappears for, like, a portion of the book. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, important. Yeah. Yeah, she's just kind of doing her thing. And Elizabeth acknowledges that she's probably being a shitty mom because she's kind of caught up in all this stuff. But I don't, yeah. I guess this book could have been with another pass and some some eyes on it. Probably could have been, you know, a little better. I don't know about significantly <laughs> better, but I think there are a few things yeah. that um, would have made this book score higher than it's going to. I don't know why more authors don't come to us and say, hey, what's wrong with her? Wrong well, with you know, book? authors send out. Well, OK, so uh, this is not a shot at you. But, you know, if someone sent me and be like, hey, can you be a beta reader for this? I'd be like, absolutely. I, I think you'd be like, yeah, I'm not reading this shit. <laughs> but like, I'd be happy to do it. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that on the regular podcast because, yeah, then the fucking emails will start coming. I just finished my autobiography. That's That could be a Patreon yeah. level that we introduce where if you're, if, you're, if you're a patron at like the $10 or $15 a month, you can send manuscripts to Livius to read. Yeah, let's – um, Yeah. We'll talk about that off air. Hundred dollars a month. <laughs> there you go. Now we're talking. Um, that's that's really. I, I might have some small things, but I think I got off my chest um, the things that I was not happy with or that I was confused about. How about you? Yeah, I think I think we're good. Cool. Thank you for joining us for our first spoiler talk of 2020. We'll do our best to give you as many as we can. Um, you know, not all books can support spoiler talk but this one i feel like uh, was a good example of that so again thanks for joining thanks for supporting us as always and we'll catch you for the next one